Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is spaz, space pirates and zombies. This is the beta version, and if you watch my exclusive alpha preview, you should have a vague idea of what this is all about. Since this came out on Impulse yesterday, and by Impulse I do mean the platform Impulse that was formerly owned by Stardock, that's the current distribution platform for this particular game, I thought I'd revisit it. Now, this video will consist of two parts. Should be in the same video, I don't see any real need to split it. The first part, I'll be showing you some of the game. It's a bit further on from where I was in the alpha, but it's sort of at the stage you'll be after a couple of hours of play. And then what I have for you are some saved files of some very advanced endgame stuff. And that's the really big ships, stuff you have not seen before, and I don't believe anyone has seen before. I don't think it was in the alphas, so it's going to be going pretty far on there. And of course, the latter half will contain some fairly major spoilers, so I'd highly recommend that if you are not interested in getting the game spoiled in any way, that you forgo watching the latter half. Right. This game is developed by Minmax Games, and it is a Star Control-ish style game. It's a freeform, top-down space shooter, whereby you gather resources, you research technology, you build ships, you build a fleet, and you go through the story and stuff like that, and it's very, very cool indeed. So, there is one other thing about this game, and that's that I actually do voice act in it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you the first piece of narration from this game, which does have my voice acting in it, and I played the role of the narrator, and I will be narrating the game pretty much through the entire thing. It's quite a lot of voice work. I think I put a good 15 or 20 minutes or so of voice work into this game, so you will get to hear a little bit of that. I don't know if that's a plus or a minus for you, but whatever the case, I'm going to show you it right now. I'm going to set up a game now. What I will be able to show you here is the fact that you can create a galaxy. Now, you can change the size of the galaxy. So if I were to, say, generate this one, it's a much larger galaxy. Larger galaxies take longer to get through, but they're technically easier. And the reason for that is that you get a shallower curve of levels. So you'll see all the numbers right here, and this means these areas have a certain level attached to them. And that's the tech level you're expected to be at when you actually go into these areas and if you're not you're going to have trouble getting into them to begin with because all of the gates are guarded and you have to fight your way through you can bribe your way through as well sometimes but most of the time you have to fight and you may end up facing enemies that are far in advance of your tech level so you're going to have a lot of trouble dealing with them now if you want a shorter game you can generate a smaller star system but also bear in mind that you have much larger level jumps for instance you start here you'll see you go 1 5 8 11 13. If you decide to go that way, you go all the way through to 19, which is a real pain. But of course, you can continue to generate different galaxies until you get one to your liking. So, since we're not going to really play this, well, I'm just going to generate a 100 galaxy, because I'm going to show you the narration, and then we'll go into the actual game, and I'll show you what it's all about. For those of you that missed the previews, I will give you some basic information on how this game actually works. Those of you who have missed the previews, you might want to go and actually watch them. They were pretty good, but this is the beta version and is such far more final. So here we go. Space is a vast and desolate frontier, covering a seemingly infinite distance. Even the speed of light is dwarfed by the unimaginable scale of our galaxy. It took nearly 250 years to bridge the void between Earth and its closest neighboring star. Mankind had mastered the folding of space-time, but relied on the use of warp gates. Massive drone ships journeyed through deep space for centuries, deploying pairs of warp gates which allowed instantaneous travel between connections. Warp gate travel had not become commonplace until the discovery of a stable element, number 126. This element contained bizarre transmutable properties, allowing it to be reconfigured into different forms of matter. This made it the most valuable and sought-after commodity in the universe. Mankind quickly became completely dependent on element 126, which the first miners named Rez. Due to the increasing demand for Rez, the Warpgate network became privatized. Anyone with ample funding was able to deploy new and unregistered warp gates. Like a new gold rush, convoys of miners traversed the expanding warp network looking for Rez deposits. This drove them closer and closer to the galactic core, where Rez deposits became richer and richer. The growing number of isolated colonies became unmanageable, as the unique ecologies of each discovered planet intermixed through trade, potential pandemics became a concern. The United Terran Alliance was formed to control interplanetary contamination. They moved to heavily restrict gate access, 
Military blockades began to screen all trade ships traveling between gates, attacking any unregistered ships that attempted to use them. For a time, the UTA was able to maintain control, but they soon crumbled under the weight of rapid expansionism and bureaucracy. Unable to manage their fleets and borders, the military hierarchy collapsed. Without central leadership, the UTA fleets dissolved into a series of isolated subcells that rarely communicated or traveled beyond local space. Each military subcell now struggles to control their systems by whatever laws they see fit to implement. Despite the enforced isolation, rogues continue the gold rush while refugees amass hidden away from the UTA's eye. They survive within the vast junk fields of an abandoned Earth. There they build a massive flagship named the Clockwork. With it, they intend to travel to the galactic core in search of a legendary mother load of rares. Oh, there you go, folks. That's the voice acting and stuff that I do on the narration. Now, I'm going to get out of this to load in one of my saves once the ship explodes. Because, well, I guess they just wired it incorrectly. Okay, so I'm going to load into one of mine. And this is me at tech level 12. And getting, ah, just not so much starting the game, but a good few hours into it. And then after that, I will show you the big end game stuff. So, as I said before, this is a Star Control-ish style game whereby you travel around space, going to different sectors, taking part in missions, discovering random events, building a fleet, gaining technology and all that good stuff. So this is the ship I currently have. It's the first medium-sized ship available to you. It is called the Tug. It's got two missile or torpedo launchers attached to it, as well as a small turret. And this turret will actually track and can fire at different angles, and you can lock onto ships with it, so it's very, very useful. And that allows you to take advantage of the fact that this is a heavily armored ship, and you can take armor damage on four different quadrants. Shield damage, unfortunately, is across the entire ship, so you can't do any Starfleet Command stuff with that. Accompanying me, I've got two smaller ships right here, and if we have a look at the interface, what we can see that's available, we've got the ship's log. This contains mission information as well as a large tutorial database of things. If you've forgotten any of this stuff, then you can always go back and check that. You've also got an advisory that will give you an idea of what to go and do next. There appears to be some kind of Michael Jackson in space going on right there. This is the tactic screen. Tactic screens allow you to order ships around. It's really easy to do it. You can just use a drag and click interface to order your ships to do various things. By default, they're set to follow you, and they will also try and collect and drop off cargo that they see. There is an advanced order page right here, which allows it to do all sorts of things. You can self-destruct, and self-destruct is actually useful later on in the game, and you will see why when you actually play it. Jettison armor plates, jettison cargo. The reason to do that is to gain more speed. If you're going to try and escape, then that's always a good idea. You can throw your armor plates and your cargo out the window, and that will increase your speed. And you can also, of course, set your ships to repair and things like that, as I'm doing right there. So if you take any damage, this will also refit your ship with new tech if you happen to be in a situation where you've researched something that should give you a boost. And that is about it in terms of the tactic screen. This is the hangar screen, and on the hangar screen, you build your ships. I currently have one medium-sized hangar. I also have two small hangars. You can gain more hangars as you go through the game, and of course, you can increase the size of them. And here, you can also customize your ships. So I don't have a huge amount of tech available at the moment. This is a utility slot. I've got a scanner right there, and I've got a tractor beam on there to pull in cargo. And this guy is armored with an couple of overload emitters as well as a small missile launcher and you can see right there you've got different hard points available for each this is a turret mount so i can do all sorts of different things there you can also upgrade engines reactors shields and armor plates there are different kinds of reactors engines shields and armor plates available and you'll learn them as you go through the game you can also set your desired surplus crew level which is useful certainly and you can check that out at some point there's not a huge amount of complexity within the hangar. That, this is something I kind of like. You can't change, say, the way the ship looks, but you can change its hull. These are the hulls that I currently have. You have to destroy ships in order to gain black box information to reverse engineer it. You see there, I blew up one hound, so I can reverse engineer it once I've got a few more. I also have access to this one right there. There's the tiny hulls, there's the large hull. And that's the ship types available. There is one more set of ship types, but I'm not going to spoil that just yet. You will see that later on. But these are not the only ships that you can get. Okay. 
Now, this game is about, as I said before, trying to advance your tech level, get through the universe, and get to the middle of the galaxy. And you do that by gathering res. You can see I'm picking it up right there. Res is one of the currencies in the game. The other currency is manpower, which is referred to as goons. Yes, goons. Goons are needed to do a wide variety of things, including cruise ships, as well as used for various trade commodities. There are no stairs in their house. Now, research screen. You research stuff, as you might imagine. You gather data, which you can see up there. Once you get to the top of the bar, it will level you up and it will give you a few points to spend. And you can put a lot of levels into these. And you really can put a lot of research into these. It does cost quite a lot. And even on the late end game, same that I've got, there's tons of technologies that are nowhere near maxed. So there's plenty of stuff you can do there. Upgrading gives you stats bonuses as well as allows you to use more advanced parts. Okay, so let's warp out of here and let's go and find something useful. We're going to go in right here. We're going to go fight in this particular engagement. It's the UTA versus civilians. And at the moment, the civilians are really not all that happy with me. That's unfortunate for them. Although there is actually a comet there and that will expire if I take another jump. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to try and do something with that comet. And you can gain a lot of really good resources from attacking a comet, but I've never successfully pulled it off so far. So I'm going to go in there and warp in and see what I can do. If I can get some resources, that will be absolutely fantastic. There's also a civilian ship actually defending this right now. I'm going to try and look at that. Loads of resources available. Whoa! Okay, that's one way to do it. I wiped out my ship in the process, but I got tons of minerals in the process. So I don't mind. And it's so good I said it twice. There we go. So plenty of res to pick up. Lots of cash. That's always good. The tug has a very high cargo capacity. So that little event I think was worthwhile. I'm fairly sure I picked up more res. And I didn't lose too much because I only threw away a single ship. Comet's now long gone. We'll dump the res down there. That's then collected by the beacon. And that goes into your total that you can see at the top of the screen. And that's pretty much that for that random event. Nice and easy. That's called an ambient event and these things... They don't really do anything specific, but you can interact with them in a number of different ways. Okay. I'm going to go here and engage in a little bit of fighting. And I'll show you what the combat capabilities of my ships are. Now, the fighting is arcadey. As you can tell, you can strafe, WAS and D. You can also use a stabilizer, which will slow you down to a crawl. Otherwise, you do have Newtonian-style movement. So, we're going to go and kill this, this little turtle head ship right here. We need a lock on it so that my turret will actually lock properly. Now, there are various weapon types. Some are good against shields, some are good against armor, some have different special effects. In this case, I am using a set of missiles as well as that small turret, which seems to be doing very, very nicely indeed. Now, the game does seem to have slowed down a little bit here. I have a feeling it's because Fraps has dropped down to 30 FPS, so... I think that the game doesn't really like that. You can notice that the movement's actually got very jerky on the screen. So I'm going to quickly restart Fraps. Okay. There we go. That's just fine. I say it is still a beta version of the game, so there are a couple of problems with it. Admittedly, since you probably won't be Frapsing this game, you shouldn't have any issues with what we just saw. But if it does end up dipping down at 30 FPS again, it will get a little bit jerky, so that's not so great. Okay, we'll just annihilate these guys right now. As I say, we are supporting the UTA, UTA in this system. You don't have to support the same faction every time, which is kind of cool. The systems work in isolation from one another, so it doesn't really matter. If you piss off the civilians in one sector, then it's not going to necessarily affect you in the next. You can still level up with them or whatever. And usually it depends on what's going on in the system as to who you'll want to ally yourselves with. You can potentially, if you do the right missions, end up friendly with both, but it's very, very unlikely in most systems. Usually when you support one, you end up annoying the other. Okay, we're doing really well in terms of gathering some awesome resources here. I was hoping that they'd warp in, and it looks like they might have. I think they've warped in one of the ships that I was looking to get hold of. And I can gain some black box information from that. That's the Hound. So I'm now at 50% there. That's one of the reasons to go into these fights. Because you can often get information for new ship types. Now you'll notice that I'm picking up these canisters. And these canisters are actually crew. Now there is a chance that the crew won't join you. And if they don't join you, you throw them out the airlock. It's really as simple as that. Let's have a look at the tactics screen. We're not really nearby anything. But I would like to... 
finish off this engagement. I'd like to get some more resources out of this as well. I'm at maximum goon capacity in this particular ship. Goons do take up a lot of space, so I'm told. And as a direct result of that, I'm not able to pick up any more. But I can go and drop them off at any time. Once I warp back into another area, all of my surplus goons will be dropped off into the mothership. Now, you can also carry surplus crew on your ship, which will uh, enable you to repair your armor quicker and uh, will give you various other bonuses like the ability to fight off boarding parties. That's not really all that important right now, and I'm looking to try and gain a good surplus of goons for the moment. That's my priority. Oh, there's another hound. That's excellent. So I'm going to try and take that out, blast it to pieces. And we're getting loads of data here as well. And we've just reverse engineered something called a GIMP. I'm not sure if I really want to reverse engineer the GIMP, but hey, there you go. Okay. There you go. Fantastic. So 75% on that reverse engineering. And if we can just finish off this ship right here, that might be us done. No, nope. we've got a few more fights to do, so we might as well keep fighting. Now, what I will say in the early stage of the game is that the weapons are a little bit anemic. And you, you can tell right there, I mean, you know, that laser's nothing to really write home about. But that's to be expected. You do get a feeling of power later on in the game once you get multiple turret mounts and things like that. And I will show you that in the second part of the video. Aside from that, it really is about just doing missions and skating around the galaxy being a space pirate. And you can do all sorts of things. You can actually attack outposts, if you like. And they've often got very valuable resources. But you'll probably piss off a faction by doing so. So that's something to bear in mind. You can also go on mining missions if you desire. And oh, we gathered a ton of res there. That's excellent. Lots of resources. That means I can afford to blow up a few more ships. And it does cost res to build ships as well as to refit them with new tech. So for the time being, we are, okay, I'm half tempted to kill this one. And the, even though he's UTA, yeah, I think I might shoot at him. The reason is he's got a design that I don't have. So I would like to reverse engineer that. And I will take a small relations hit, but I should be fine. Now, this tug right here we're not so interested in. I'm already flying one of those. You can very clearly see. Once we catch up to this one, I'm going to shoot at it. And then I will gain some information about it. And uh, Bless me. Uh, hopefully, get the ability to actually... Do some good. There we go. Do some damage to him. He is not happy with me at all. I don't really blame him, honestly. But I want your ship design. If only you'd just give it to me peacefully. He has no intention of doing that. There we go. We can. We now have the GIMP available. If you so desire to fly around in a GIMP, then all your dreams have come true in this particular title. Die, 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 die. Now, my shields are fine, my armor's fine, my... I think I have a higher tech level than these guys, so... They don't really have a huge chance against me unless they have a station or large numbers of evil ships. Now, we can just mass retreat out of here, and that's really what I'm going to do, because this isn't a mission, so it doesn't really matter. So, I'm just going to bug out of here as quickly as possible. And that will move us all the way back to the mothership, and it will also ensure that we get more goons onto the mothership, which is... Definitely a good thing. There we go. Alright, frame rates drop down again, which is fairly irritating. So once again, I'm going to end up restarting perhaps. i just like to show you this and have it look good in terms of its frame rate. Because this is a problem with the beta right now. It's not a problem that affects many people, but annoyingly it is dropping the frame rate down to 30. So we're going to be right back. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Back up to a nice frame rate. I'm certainly hoping that made a difference on the recording end of things. It certainly does on my screen. Okay, so we have some upgrade points. The question is, what are we going to do with the upgrade points? Well, there's all manner of things we can do with the upgrade points, if we like. We can research drones, which would be kind of nice. We can research bombs, and we can also research mines. I believe I do have some drones available, so I could research those. Although, bear in mind that I probably don't have any ships to use them, so let's see what I have available to me have the pounder right there that's actually got a medium bomb amount so i think i might take some bombs there i don't know if i can build any right now i might not have the tech for it also researched the gimp two small shoot amounts and one launch amount it's a light assault craft so it's probably about as good as my turtle head that i was using right there they're a little bit slow though i mean i do have a lot of firepower on there it's a little bit tough so there's nothing to really object to right there okay i'm gonna rebuild i'm gonna build a pounder right here there we go bombs are unique weapons as you can see right there i've never used one of these things before the bomb will eventually burn itself out 
try to detonate the bomb as it reaches its critical mass. So, yeah. It's a little interesting, to say the least. Okay. So I have a medium resonance mass bomb. If I so desire, I can also grab surplus mines. Now, if I have level 2 in mines, then I can go for those. That might be worthwhile. I think we'll go with the bomb for the time being, though. Aside from that, what else am I putting on it? We have a turret. What can I put on the turret? I could put a disruptor cannon on the turret. And we've got a couple of tractor beams. I'm going to put a scanner on and a tractor beam. Sounds fairly reasonable. Heavy arm plating. As high-tech stuff as I can put on it. And once you do that, you can simply refit to rebuild it. In the meantime, I'm going to put some points in bombs so I gain some benefit from it. Increase the max speed of the bomb. I ended up putting one in drones, didn't I? That was a little bit dumb. Oh, well, never mind. It's not a big deal. I'm going to pop one. Actually, no, I'll just save it for the next level. Again, you get plenty of research points, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Okay, reconfigure my ship right there, and then we'll go and see about some other things, do some missions, maybe go and assault an outpost, and then I'll show you some of the end game stuff in this game. Now, thus far, I am probably a bit biased, because obviously I've been working with these guys since the alpha, so it's a little bit difficult for me to appear unbiased in this game. It really, really is. But it is really good. I, It's hard for me to say anything else because I really do believe that. But I think that people are going to think, oh, well, he's only interested because he voice acted in this game. Well, I'd encourage you to go and watch the alpha footage because I was very positive in that as well. Admittedly, there were some issues with the game. They kind of still are, but they are fairly minor. I do genuinely think this is a very, very good game. And there aren't all that many games like this at the moment. So I think that's certainly something that it has going in its favor. It's also a very pretty game using the torque engine right there that tends to do two-dimensional space stuff really, really well. I'm fairly sure it's the same engine that was used for gratuitous space battles. It looks very, very similar. Okay, there's the comet. I just blew myself up with a bomb. At least I think I did. That wasn't so great. And I think I lost the comet as well, so that's not ideal. The bomb's kind of a weird weapon, honestly, but the amount of damage you can do kind of makes it worth it. There we go, significant damage done. I dented my armor there, but nothing major. And that comet is already well gone, so there's nothing I can do about that. Okay, so we have blockades right here, and I was talking about these blockades earlier. These stop you from going into various areas, and you have to fight your way through them. They're always blockaded by the UTA, as far as I'm aware. So you will end up losing relationship with the UTA in that sector if you do try and run the blockade. But of course, you also get the advantage of being able to attack first, which is even more awesome. Now, if you head into areas like this, you can dock with stations, and these stations often have missions for you, as well as the ability to improve relations and buy new blueprint plans. Now, I don't need to do anything like that right now, so I'm not too worried. Ooh, nice. Found some cloaked cargo containers. The scanner is very useful for detecting cloak, as you can see. And cargo containers will usually contain data and res. Awesome. Right. Well, we're not too worried about that, so what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go attack the civilian station here. Civilian strength is not particularly amazing, and often these contain an awful lot of data, as well as goons and sometimes blueprints, as far as I can tell. So, ow, my face. I'm going to do as much damage to this as possible. Now, sadly, this disruptor cannon does bare minimum to shields. However, I do have this bomb, so I'm going to back off slightly. But first, ah, it's another one of these guys. We were looking for these earlier, as I recall. Oh, they detonated the bomb right in my face. Non-ideal. So, first things first, we're going to try and deal with the hound. Steer the bomb right into him. There we go. That's a kind of cool weapon. I like that. That's a pretty neat idea. Some people might not like the idea of it taking control away from your ship, but there we go. We now have the Hound, and we can look and see what the Hound actually does. These ships are very distinct. They've all got a wide variety of different hard points on them, so they're used for different purposes. The Hound is, by the looks of it, just a raw battleship. It's got two turrets on it, and it's got a utility mount, so that's really quite nice. Now, back to blowing up this science base, or at least trying to do just that. Now, he does have point defense on there, so hitting it with a bomb is going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to try and fire it a little bit closer to it. He's not having it, is he? 
I might have to refit my ship for this purpose. No, the bombs aren't going to work. Okay. So, I'm going to refit. Now, my ships are sort of fighting there. They might die. They might not. I really don't care too much at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change my ship around. And I'm going to swap out for this new design we have right here, which has two turret mounts. And I'm going to apply double overload emitters. These are very, very powerful for bringing shields down. I should be able to batter my way through there quite nicely. I put some surplus crew on there as well because I have spares. I don't really mind. I've actually got full crew capacity, so I might as well put some spares on there so that I can get repaired and things like that. And well, I'm going to refit the ship. Now, in the meantime, you can actually switch control to one of the other ships, if you like, and that's a particularly good idea because it's nothing more boring than just sitting around not doing anything. Unfortunately, my ship is taking a lot of damage for the time being, and also the missiles are doing barely any damage as are the lasers that I have on here because these are these are very small lasers and this science base has much better shields in the meantime however I bring you this this is a much more powerful ship in terms of its turret mounts and I'm going to use that to melt my way through the shields which I am doing at a very good pace for the moment and I can just sit here the shields on this ship should be powerful enough in order to deal with this I've also leveled up as well which is even better now, as I said, you can do these if you like. You are not forced to do it. You can rush your way through the game. You can take your time. It's fairly flexible in that regard, and it's pretty free form. There are a lot of surprises to be found later on in the game. And I think once we've blown up this outpost, we're going to go on to the end game stuff, and I'm going to show you some of the bigger ships, as well as some concepts that you might not be familiar with, which definitely were not in the alpha, and a lot of people don't know about them, even the guys that were alpha testing. Okay, shields are now down. This is a good thing. Unfortunately, the lasers I now currently have are rubbish against it. So, oh, hi. That's a new ship type, I think. No, it's an array. I've already got that ship type, but we should be able to annihilate it very easily. Lost the ship in the process, but this, I think, should be worthwhile. It's, it's, it's worth losing little ships in order to get the mother load that you get from these stations, usually. I'm not doing a lot of damage to his armor. No, I, yes, you can actually dock with things that you hate, by the way. And this kind of sucks because there's a lot of cool things here, like the scatter cannon and the point defense. I would really, really like these. Unfortunately, my relationship with them is far too low to get them, so I'm going to have to get them elsewhere. Now, this is problematic because my hound is about to die by the looks of it, and I don't have the firepower to deal with it otherwise. I don't have any missiles, so I can't deal big damage to that. I am going to cancel this build, and I'm going to bring in the heavier ship once again as long as my ai partners can keep the shields down that station then i can swap out to something with a little bit more firepower in terms of dealing with that so i'm going to go for the launchers this time around now torpedoes do a lot more damage but they are much easier to destroy so i'm just going to go with the standard missiles for the moment and we've got the overload beam emitter and a tractor beam and a scanner on there. So we will build that. In the meantime, let's try and keep the pressure on this damn thing. That array refuses to die, unfortunately. I need more firepower, and I don't currently have it. Taking a lot of damage on my smaller ships. Oh man, the shields are back up on that as well. It's even worse. Okay, right, here's the tug. Now, the tug should be able to easily carve its way through that. There we go. And the shields are down by the looks of it. This is good. So I can start now pounding this with missile launchers. I need to get really close because it's point defense lasers are doing a very good job of shooting them down. Taking out these outposts is quite tricky. This is one of the weaker outposts. There are much larger outposts with fighter drones and all sorts of things. They're difficult to take down, but they can be done if you do so correctly. I'm just hoping there's enough res in here to justify the amount of ships that I've lost naturally attacking it. It's not the worst thing in the world if it isn't, but still. It's not exactly what I call economical. Oh, he's brought friends. How wonderful. Now, I'm just going to keep pounding on this thing and just ignore it for the time being and make sure that all of my guys are ordered to attack the station and nothing else. Just Hopefully, they will keep firing missiles into it. Its armor is about to go down. Its structural integrity is failing and it is about to detonate. Fantastic. And it looks like I've destroyed the infrastructure of this particular star. Very cool. There we go. There's the detonation and there are some plans in there as well. Bloody array stole a bunch of... Oh, we just got a reverse engineer on the scatter cannon. Oh, nice. That's cool. And some point defense as well. Now, I'm hoping all of the stuff that he just picked up gets dropped. And it does. Awesome. And we've just got the plans for standard cloak out of that. 
Very cool. So, it is worth being a space pirate, folks. Space piracy is not a crime. It is a privilege. It is perhaps a right. I love that. I, I, there's, there's nothing more fun than ejecting the prisoners that will not do as they're told out of the airlock and then destroying them with the lasers right there. Or running them over. You can do that too. Squish. Excellent. So we came out of that with a good amount of data. We did lose some res, but res is very easily mined. And we got plenty of goons out of it as well. So nothing to really complain about there. Right. Okay, so that's that for the time being. You see that I've completely pretty much destroyed the infrastructure of this system, the civilian strength, which actually has a typo in this current build, has gone down, which means they will be way less of a threat in this area. And I'm now going to go into another save, and I'm going to show you some of the advanced endgame stuff and some of the larger ships. If you do not want spoilers, ladies and gentlemen, please, and I do mean please, do not watch any further. Have you turned off? No? You haven't turned off? Turn off, you fools, if you don't want spoilers. Okay, here we go. This is a level 76 save 19 hours into the game. Yes, I do in fact want to load that. Actually, did I save that game? Might be helpful if I did. I think it's auto-saved. Let's just check. I'm going to warp out just to make sure I don't want to lose what I just did because I gained some awesome, useful technology out of that. So there we go. Save the game. Awesome. And now... No, I almost saved over that level 76 file. That would have been very stupid. There we go. Here's the level 76. This will show you some of the more advanced weapons available, as well as the advanced ship configuration and big, big ships. Now, I was saying before, there is another class of ship beyond what is shown. It is huge, the huge class ship. And they are very, very large with huge amounts of hard points, as you might imagine. So we're talking about full-size battleships and carriers and things like that that you can pilot. I'm going to show you exactly what they look like. Also, this is pretty much the end game now. Not a lot of people, if any, really knew that this was going to happen because this was not in the alpha build. So what we have here is actually a zombie infestation. And it's a little bit crazy. Show you the system map right there. That's what we can't have going on. You'll see that both of the factions are actually friendly to you and this is the reason very far on in the game the zombies which is the sort of borg like menace in this game they are taking over the entire galaxy they infect systems they infect other ships they can infect your ships and you are trying to gather a large fleet to go into the galactic core in order to destroy the zombie menace and you can see right there how it basically works you have to invade these various areas. Zombies have their own ship types as well. And they look particularly hideous, I have to say. It's kind of like... You remember our Master of Orion 2? You had to go in and destroy the Antarans. It's kind of like that, only these guys are way more aggressive. And this is what's currently happening. All sorts of zombie infestations all over the galaxy. You've got to do something about that. Now... What I'm going to do is we're going to jump into this area. Once you jump into an infected area, you must deal with the zombie menace. You have to. You have no choice in the matter. You see, our mothership looks a little bit better than it was looking at previously. Now, this right here is a massive battleship. And you can see it is armed to the teeth. And that's not all. The way that the developers have this configured, a lot of these turret mounts are actually with booster modules. And you can see that these booster modules will increase the reload rate of all projectile cannon class weapons and things like that. If I wanted, I could have way, way more turret mounts. In fact, I have a ship that has lots of turret mounts. See this? This ship actually has eight turrets and a tractor beam in the middle. And these are all mounted with small disruptor cannons. Loads of different types of weapons and boosters available right here. There's a scatter cannon if you want to deal with smaller ships. Particle cannons. All sorts of goodness. Have a look and see what this guy has got right here. This is what looks like a missile boat by the looks of it. Small and medium missile launchers. Going to build one of those. And... What's this? Now, this is a very small hangar, so we only have access to some fairly basic things. I'm going to grab a look at that front-mounted cannons. I like the idea of Gatling cannons, so I'm going to grab a bunch of Gatling cannons right there. And I'm also going to have a fast recharge reactor. Low power, but massive capacitor. Yeah, we'll go for that for the time being. 
Sounds like a plan. Information about shields. There's a quick charge shield. You've got standard cloaking devices. Fortress shield. Very, very large shield, but very, very slow to recharge. There's a reactor. High capacity. And also we have different engine types there as well. So we're going Gatling cannons on there. And I might actually take a booster for these. These are all cannon type weapons, aren't they? Is it cannon type? It's got to be. I mean, it's called cannon, for God's sake. So let's find the cannon booster module. That's shields. Crew. Cannons. There we go. That should be interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing how that ship performs. Obviously, as you go through the game, you've got to figure out what works and what doesn't in terms of ship design. This ship can take a large amount of punishment and also has a huge amount of firepower. Should rip through larger ships very easily indeed. It's a very big capital ship. It's not the biggest, by the way, as you probably saw earlier. Let me show you. Yes, there are larger ships than that. You've got this which is massive. That's mostly a carrier. You've got a big carrier there and a massive freighter as well as these who are pretty large to begin with as well. Now, what's this Gatling? Look at that. There we go. That should do plenty of damage. And this is designed, I think, to chew through armor. Awesome. Fantastic stuff. Right, well, let's warp out and let's get into a big battle with these things because a lot of what's going on is related to dealing with the zombie menace. And also, you can build up things like star bases at this stage of the game. And it will allow you to do all sorts of fantastic things. I've got an event right there, if we like. We've got a civilians versus zombie fight, so we'll go and engage that. So yeah, building up fleets, building up star bases, upgrading infrastructure and defenses and things like that. It's a much larger meta game once you get to this stage. Now, I could fly around in the big ship, but I actually really don't want to right now. I want to fly around in my dinky little ship right here. So I'm going to go do just that. I have a lock on a star cruiser. I have a feeling this thing is going to be a little bit large. Oh, actually, some huge ships over there. A carrier. Oof, that's huge. Well, let's go and try and deal with it anyway. Do we have the firepower necessary to deal with it? No, no. About to find out. Got my dinky little cannon ship right here. Taking a lot of punishment from what looks to be a friendly ship over there. Just gonna get all the way over there. That's a large zombie fleet. This is gonna be unpleasant. Zombies have the ability to infect ships. Think how Homeworld Cataclysm works. They actually fire some infectious stuff. If your shields go down, you are prone to boarding, which is not good. I have a feeling that carrier is actually friendly. Looks like it is for the moment. Okay, I'm going to try and rip through that. There we go. Oh, I just took a massive hit. In fact, I just got annihilated in single shot by what looked to be a massive capital ship weapon. Oh, my. Okay, we need a lock on this star cruiser. Try and pound it as hard as possible. Make sure the shields stay up, because if your ship gets infected, it will actually turn into a zombie ship if you end up losing it. So, that's not so good. It, you end up having to really self-destruct at that point. Okay, that Star Cruiser is going down quite nicely. Shields are holding on all of our ships for the time being. I think we also need to set this to auto-rebuild, actually, so we can get it right back into the fight. That ship does a lot of damage, but it was ripped. Oh, wow, I just got hit by something. Ooh, yes, the larger ships do explode. It's to be expected. They do do a lot of damage to people around you as well. Oh, got cl a cloaked unit in here somewhere. It's probably not good. I am really, really close to this guy, which is not what I want. Unfortunately, this ship is really slow. The turret's also moving very slow as well. There we go. Gather some data. Some upgrade points. There are huge amounts of upgrades available there. There are zombies coming towards my shields. I think they actually do damage as well, but I'm fairly sure they can't infect me. Yeah, they do shield damage. If they get through your shields, then they will infect you. And you've got to hope that you've got enough crew to fight them off. Because if you don't, well, your ship is doomed. It's best to self-destruct it. Okay, rip our way through that. Shouldn't have too much of a problem at all. My god, that little ship is doing amazing damage. It's a lot of fun to pilot as well. It's very maneuverable. Just absolutely shreds its way through ships. Especially zombie ships. Zombie ships, I don't think, have shields. As far as I can tell. There we go. Big ship right there. Looks like my capacitor is down. I also have a full cargo hold, which is slowing my ship down. I could dump that cargo if I liked. 
Always something to bear in mind. We are also reverse engineering the carrier. One of the only ships we're missing right here. There we go. Hit it with everything we have. Should be able to tear that apart very easily. Down you go, sir. Down you go. Wonderful. There we go, folks. That is basically what Space Pirates and Zombies is all about. To get to this stage, the developers took 19 hours, so I'd imagine it's going to take you significantly longer. There's a lot of gameplay here. It's currently available as a beta program, and you will get the full version once it comes out. It's available over on Impulse for $15. Contains a significant amount of gameplay. It's a really fun game. It's got a lot going for it. There are a few problems. I'll try and go through a few of them. Like, for instance, the way that the goon system works is not ideal, particularly since you're... AI ships right now don't seem to go out of their way to pick up pods full of crew, which is kind of annoying because they're really, really valuable, and it would be nice to get them to do that. Since the capacity of goons is so low on a lot of ships, you do get into an awful lot of trouble if you're trying to collect large amounts of them. I have a feeling I'm actually going to end up... Oh, wow. Yeah. One of my ships just got infected, as you can see right there. It's now turned into a zombie ship and will now fight against me. I should have self-destructed it before that. But this is the problem when you're fighting zombies. You can often get into a situation where you slowly get outnumbered. And you don't really realize it until it's too late and your entire fleet gets torn apart. It's a very cool mechanic, though. I really, really do like it an awful lot. Okay, so we've just managed to detonate that shield I'm currently holding on this ship. This is a very powerful battleship that I've got rolling around right here. Extremely dangerous. So yeah, the goon system is a bit problematic sometimes. I feel they could probably do that a little bit better. I think that the AI ships need to be able to go around and tractor beam in goons. It's the weird thing. You can tractor beam the goon pods, but the AI ships don't seem to be able to. And I don't know why that is. So that's definitely something that could be fixed right there. Some of the weapons at the start do feel a bit anemic, but you can very clearly see here there are massive battles later on in the game that certainly do not, under any circumstances, feel anemic. Absolutely not. A lot of firepower available here. Big capital ship battles, the kind of thing that you're hopefully looking to enjoy. It's not the kind of thing that you tend to find all that often. A long time ago, we used to have games like this, but not so much anymore. Easy to learn, it's hard to master, there's plenty of things going for this game, and I would highly recommend that you give it a try. $15 on Impulse, that's $15 across all regions by the way, so whatever your local conversion rate is, that's what you will pay for it. So no dollar to euro nonsense going on right there, and I believe that's currently available worldwide on the Impulse platform. Those asking whether or not there will be a Steam release, I know those guys are looking into it at the moment, but since it is currently a beta program, I still have some things to get ironed out then it's not on Steam yet, but I would still highly recommend that you get it on Impulse because it is discounted and it's pretty much DRM free as well as far as I'm aware. A wonderful game by a two-man studio, MinMax, and I've been happy to, one, take a look at it and to actually voice act in this particular title because it is genuinely unique and very, very enjoyable. My name is Total Biscuit, and I will see you next time.